Hi, my name's Lilika. When it comes to preparing for paper two for your AS level English, nothing will ever pop just doing past papers and practicing that way. But there are definitely a few shortcuts you can use to shorten the time you take to actually write the paper by just doing a few key things in your preparation for the exam. And that's what I'm gonna be talking about today. There are two sections to paper two. Each of them have three prompts. The format of these prompts stay the same every year. The first section covers imaginative writing and the second section covers writing for an audience. You will pick one prompt from each section and write an essay based on that prompt. So you'll be writing two essays in total, each of them being 600 to 900 words in length. What I'm gonna do today is go through each section prompt by prompt and give you a few tips and tricks that you can use to really double down and up your game when it comes to writing a full essay based on each prompt. So section A, imaginative writing. As mentioned previously, there are three prompts that you will be given and you'll have to pick one and write an essay on it. I think it's a good idea to pick the type of prompt that you'll be using for your exam so you can really practice that prompt specifically. Of course, you should practice all of the prompts because the prompt that you usually prefer, let's say like for me, I prefer usually doing a descriptive piece based on a scene that they give me, but the scene that they give me might not really inspire me on the day of the exam and I might have to fall back on one of the other two prompts that they give me and I better have, you know, practiced those prompts as well. Otherwise, I am a bit screwed. But nevertheless, I did practice writing descriptive pieces more often than writing contradictory pieces or a story just because I knew that that was the one I could flow in the best and it was the easiest for me to write a whole essay that's quite long, 600 to 900 words in the small time frame that they give me. I'd suggest coming up with a character beforehand that you can kind of slot into or maybe change the name of based on any prompt that they give you in the imaginative writing section. So for example, if they ask you to write a story with the first prompt, you can write the story out of the perspective of this character that you've already created so that you have a lot less thinking and creative work to do on the day of the exam because you came up with it prior to the exam. The best way to go about creating a character is to fill out a character sheet. There are a bunch of them online, but I'll leave one in the description of the video that you can go, you know, copy paste into a document and then fill in to really flesh out your character and get to know that character so you can use that character in any story you have to write. Okay, let's go through section A prompt by prompt and I'll give you a few tips for each prompt in section A. So for the first prompt, the story, oftentimes you're asked to create a sense of suspense and drama. I suggest as you prepare for your exam, coming up with a specific backbone or storyline that you can use that's quite versatile in its use that you can kind of adapt based on any starting sentence that they give you. Because they do tend to use the same style of prompt for each exam session, it means you can just prepare even better. So for the first prompt when you're writing a story, this is the perfect time to use a character you came up with when you were preparing for your exam. Always try to inject your story with narrative conventions. Things like a setting, a theme, a conflict and a narrative arc. Since oftentimes they ask you to create suspense, do that by using short, sharp sentences. You want the whole piece piece to be a build up and the final sentence to be the climax. Speaking of the climax, before the exam, decide which way you would want to end any story that you write. Do you want to end it on a cliffhanger? Do you want to shock the reader? Do you want to completely resolve the tension by the end of the story? Make up your mind before the exam. So again, so you have a lot less thinking to do and can focus more on just writing your essay. Okay, moving on to prompt two. Again, this will be two contrasting pieces that you have to write. One will be positive or exciting and the second one will be like negative or peaceful. I'd suggest having an arsenal of vocabulary words you can use in any piece that you write. Memorize the antonyms for each of these vocabulary words so you can really create contrast in your pieces by using one word in the first piece and then using the antonym in the second piece to create that contrast just by the words you're using already. Again, you really do need to memorize the conventions of writing that evokes different types of emotion. For example, with writing that evoke excitement, they usually use shorter sentences, whereas peaceful writing usually has longer flowing sentences. Knowing things like that will be crucial when it comes to writing any prompt in this exam, but especially for this prompt where the two pieces you write will have to contradict each other in emotion. On to the third prompt, which is a descriptive piece. 
This one was by far my favorite. Um, I did this one for my exam and I really enjoyed it. They give you a setting and you just have to describe the way it looks. Ideally, you want to create a sense of mystery in this piece. Start by describing the scene from afar and then slowly zoom in on certain specific details and describe them by engaging the reader's senses. Describe the color, texture, taste and smell of each of the different aspects of the scene that you're describing. The best way I can kind of explain the way the text should feel that you're writing is it's like a camera panning over the scene. So describe each thing that you're describing in relation to the other pieces. So be like, on the left there's this and on the right there's that. You want to really flesh out and create a world that the reader can be drawn into as you describe uh, specific details, key details of the scene. Try not to focus on just one specific detail too much though. You want there to be a balance between the attention that you give to each detail in the scene. All right, on to section B, which is writing for an audience. So prompt one for section B is usually a type of report or review that you're writing. Everything you write has to have the purpose of creating a specific reaction in the audience that you're writing for. For example, if they ask you to write a report for your school, remember that your audience are a bunch of high schoolers. So for example, your piece shouldn't be too formal because that doesn't make sense based on the audience that you've been given. If your prompt is to review a movie, for example, chances are the people want you to be fairly straightforward and straight to the point so they know whether the movie is worth watching or not. Always focus on the specific needs of your audience and try to fulfill it in your writing. Again, the conventions of different types of text, knowing those will be key here. You don't want to be using like the conventions of a diary entry when they asked you specifically for a piece for a newspaper, like an article. That would really detract from the marks you can gain from the examinator no matter how well the piece is written. They give you a specific style to write in for a reason. Okay, on to prompt two for section B. This one will be, again, two contrasting pieces. In this one, you'll need to include the reasoning behind two contrasting perspectives. Ideally, you want to make different points for each side. So one piece will include points for one point of view and the other one will include points for an opposing point of view. However, it's smart to include points from the first piece that you write in the second piece and kind of argue directly against it to really make a good argumentative essay. Or maybe if you're writing a positive and a negative review, focus on the same aspects of the thing you're reviewing and then talk about why one person would think it's good and the other person would think it's bad. Okay, the last one, prompt three for section B. This one will usually be a type of speech or script. Here the audience is especially important since you are directly addressing them in your writing. Make sure to know the conventions of speeches and evoking emotion in the audience, for example, and like the structural conventions of writing a script, for example. Here emotive language is key. You'll use rhetorical devices and such, but all of that's covered if you just study and memorize the conventions of the different styles of text, including speeches and scripts, which is what they usually focus on for this prompt. I really hope you found these tips helpful. If you have any questions or anything that I was unclear on, feel free to leave those in the comments below. I'll try to be as active um, in the comments as possible. If you like the video, like it, maybe send it to someone you think might find it helpful. And if you really like the video, maybe subscribe. It's free. You can always unsubscribe later. And this is the type of content that I tend to create on this channel. So chances are, if you like this video, you'll like the rest of the stuff that I create. But thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one and good luck on your studying journey.